Hello, not a care. Welcome back to Grim Dawn. We have surpassed Blood Grove. We're now in Griver's Mill, looking to clear out some of the local mobs that are being a bit of a nuisance. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And after that, we have some other questies to do. There's a Fort Heron that we have to go to in order to. Uh, well, get better friends with our uh, buddies at Kaiman's Chosen. And I think those two things will keep us occupied for uh, this episode. Let me stop my timer there, otherwise I have no idea how long the episode will went for. So our war cry is now getting a decent range. Up from the, the level one version, the, the plus two to war cry is now it does add two meters to the to radius if I remember correctly. That's it's it's useful. At least it's useful for just hooking everything. Letting them know that they really should pay attention to me. But we are active effectively at level three. The plan is to push it quite a bit further, but we do need to level a couple times for that. So finding items to push your skill levels, especially this early on, or for skills that you still have at one point, it does make a difference. Aw, you're all alone now. Okay, let's uh, make you join your friends. Okay. Oh. I remember there being a... That was a, a side area here, somewhere. It was part of the, the hidden path content, if I remember correctly, but it's... It's a side area, nonetheless. The Shrine of the Forgotten Gods. Now it's just a, a nesting place for manticores. Ah, Death Vigil. I think last time we went here, Death Vigil were my allies. So... There wasn't a lot to do because my friends were fighting the manticore. Now I can just kill everybody. Which does make things quite a bit easier to deal with. See something move? That's killed it. Not ready. Ooh. Viroxis, Crimson Claw, the Bruiser. Oh. Not really making that much of an impression. But admittedly, we are in a rather tanky state. So every once in a while, we do get a, a reflection aura popping up. Got that last episode as well. Makes a little bit of a difference against ranged opponents. But for melee, we shall have so much retaliation damage that I don't think it's it's gonna be all that significant of an impact. It is mostly for ranged. Scribe Osterum's a note. Hidden remains. Was there an encounter or not for this? Or is it just loot? So far, it just seems to be loot. And we get a, a wall sculpture of a god. Or hidden god. Forgotten god. Not a hidden god, it's a forgotten god. What was it called? We don't know. We forgot. And that was all that was to it. I wasn't entirely sure if there was a boss fight here or not, but turns out there was no boss fight. The the hidden path content, the shrine guardians there do count as boss fights, but this was just a uh, just a, a random heroic, nothing truly special about it. That skill's not ready. 
Okay, let's just give a shout out to all our summoner buddies. A war shout, that is. And got you. Come on, pick up the item. Come on. And we'll kill the thing that's obstructing us. Yes. So that guy was down to about 20% of his health. And reflection does does work its way. Give it enough time and enough distractions. Eventually you will reflect him to death. And we have arrived at our destination. Lots of these Kryptonian and Devourager. And they're quite literally killing themselves. It is rather hilarious. Just looking them just, just all charge in and explode. <laughs> and now these other caster guys can get in. And oh, so, okay, so they're getting into melee range, that's why they're taking more damage. So I think I do need to uh, be a bit more involved in combat Can't in order to yet. make the most of it. Well, reflection and retaliation is no substitute for actually trying to actively murder your opposition. I can't do that. It does help though. Let's see. We lift a skull. But we probably should just go back, hand in a quest, make sure we have checked it off, and then head north. Also a decent opportunity to empty your pots. Remember to invest in your mastery bar. It is a useful tip, it's really easy to forget that that is what it's all about. Hello Sergeant Serif. The lumber mill is clear and we get some reputation and a scrap. I'll give you a good price on what I've got left. Oh, so let's see. Ooh, that's a 200 weapon. 200 weapon. 200 weapon. Caster, caster, caster. Caster. Fell blade of cruelty. It's not a caster weapon, but. Might as well be. It's all the bleeding damage. It's really not all that relevant. Low armor. Yellow, not green. Low armor. This is more armor, but yeah, it's spirit and casting. That's really, again, not really what you want. Mismatch, mismatch. And more cast armor. Iron well spent. So, and we got a scribe's notes. And that was that. Empty got pockets. Time to move on. I'll hold on to that for you. Now it's time to go after Master Ravok. Or Ravik. Not entirely sure how you're supposed to pronounce, it, pronounce that name, but Fort Heron is the place we're gonna go. And I believe we can go just more or less just north from here. Just take the. the what's it on the right hand side? Hmm. I know the left hand side eventually just goes onwards, so we we'll probably have to angle right. Let's let's stick with right. That skill's not ready. So if you're gonna go with the necromancers with the order of death's vigil, I don't think they sent you to Fort Heron. Or I might have just forgotten about it, but I think they, they sent you to ready. another place. Something that's also to the northeast, but back to some mine, which is actually a fun area to go to. Okay. We will push on. Going here, going there, just angling a bit left. Some shouting. That skill's not ready. So you need to hoover over enemies in order to see their health bar, which on the one hand it, it, it's nice, it's, it's good for immersion, on the other hand it's really easy to overlook monsters that are actively generating lots of pretty attack effects. Okay. You are my enemies. 
there's also some cameras chosen in there. Confusion. Uh, two guys are not in the fence. That's something I know for sure. Way too large above. They have some visual acolytes. That skill's not ready. Skill's not ready. Wait. Your camera chosen. Oh, you're shooting at that guy. I was probably thinking, why is he turning around and looking at me all the time? But that was because I was always in between him and the enemy. That skill's not ready. Yeah, the, 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 the friend or foe outlines are slightly too much on the subtle side to me. More in terms of vigil. That skill's not ready. Hey, that Lord. So, some of these cast guys in the back here. How oh, they are slowly pushing their way through. They, they are. Just not. Not enough. Yeah, and the shield ball doesn't trigger unless we are attacking so it's it's not a defensive thing that will automatically trigger so that really does force you to keep attacking skills not ready okay. got a suspicion that they are summoning things here yeah suspicion oh, correct these red lords And then the skellies drop off. So, loot. Now we're just gonna focus on the loot first, just let them group up a little bit, and then after that, we're just gonna take care of the casters. And then everybody else is just gonna oh, be swept up. Uh, let's not attack the false revenants, those are summons. Really easy to overlook. Uh, let's see. Revenant, there, delivered. Acolyte, it's just summoning skeletons rather than a slightly scarier things. That skill's not and ready. This one is still there even though its master is not. Interesting. Oh. Let's actually move up the stairs. Into Fort Heron we go. So the shaman, no not the shaman tree, the occultist ready. tree, there's this curse that by default it just weakens opponents, but there is this optional side upgrade that you can add that to it not ready. that will enrage the enemies, make them attack faster and do more damage and things like that at the trade-off of doing a lot of life damage to them. I wonder if for a reflection build like this that curse would be useful because it allows monsters to attack faster. And if they attack faster, they attack more often. So they kill themselves faster. The trade-off being, of course, ready. that it will uh, hurt you a bit more. But situations where your life is just utterly stable and the only challenge is just how fast you can either kill your opponents or let themselves kill themselves. For situations like that, it might not even be a bad idea to run with a curse like that. That skill's the not ready. downside is, of course, that occultists and soldiers, they, they do, do tend to push completely different directions. Um, oh, Occultist is very clearly a caster, not a malier. 
I can't you do, do have the, the Eldritch upgrade, but again, it's, it's more of a focus of arcane damage. No, not arcane, of a vitality damage. So some, some bleeding, some chaos, some fire, and mostly those. That skill's not ready. Rather than more of a, a physical focus. That said, there is the was it blood of Reek. Okay, I'm actually just gonna grab this. So I was talking about Solel's Witchfire, which is it's a melee assistance. You gain you have a chaos damage, a bonus to fatality damage, some extra attack speed. Then the second ride, of course, is gonna uh, give you some vitality resistance, some vitality and chaos damage. I seem to remember it also adding energy drain in the past, but apparently that's gone now. You could even choose to convert some of your physical damage to chaos damage. But those are damage types that are not native to the soldier, so you'll be pushing yourself into a direction that's not directly supported by the soldier class. Sigil of Consumption is a very nice lifesteal, AoE lifesteal. This is a seal, you plop it down and it will suck the life out of enemies and heal you for it. So it just helps you stay alive. And you can make it even more potent. Doombolt is just nice for single target fights. Uh, just a huge reduction to enemy health and a huge amount of uh, damage. It actually has an AoE, but it does also have a cooldown. So it's not going to be something that you'll be using on you know, just killing every little random critter. Uh, you got this entire tree for Dreek's uh, Evil Eye, which is a casting spell, so it's kind of a mismatch. Bloody Pox is the curse I was talking about. A reduction to enemies' health, it's over time, so it applies multiple times. Uh, there's some bleeding damage. And then you have Fevered Rage, which is uh, an upgrade. It will lower the recharge of the skill by default 3.5 seconds, and it will just eliminate it, so you can keep casting it whenever. It massively increases the reduction to enemies' health. Um, total damage modified by 25%, so that's just a big damage boost. But they also gain a plus 150% total speed. So their hits hit harder, 25% harder. But they will be attacking at 2.5 times their base speed, plus 150%. So 2.5 plus another quarter. You're looking at over 300 and... 12%? I think 312 and a half percent if the just the math is correct. Um, but if it's wrong, hey, I'm doing this on the fly. So mobs hurt a lot harder, but they will be hitting themselves a lot harder. So if you time this in combination with something like an overguard, then you can do some nice things with it. And then later on you got things like wasting, which lower their offensive ability. And but Black Death, that you even give them a chance to confuse them so they might start attacking their buddies, which is useful. Uh, Curse of Frailty, less physical damage and spe uh, movement speed, so you've got a bit more of crowd control. And the physical damage does synergize with all the damage uh, that you do. And here, stripping all the other resistances away, especially if you've got a lot of varied retaliation damage, which I'm currently doing. I've got, got a lot of... Uh, piercing but I do also have other elements so this curse is just nice because it strips away most of their resistances I think piercing chaos and ether are the only ones that are accepted here everything else is just stripped away by quite a bit uh, blood of the rig is nice it's a it's a heal a heal over time but it also gives you acid retaliation which stacks up rather nicely so again that that combines nicely with fevered rage and then of course you've got the, the pets, so you could go for a, a healing raven or maybe a, a hellhound and then grab the hellfire aura which boosts your fire burn uh, chaos damage and gives a fire retaliation. So no, it just, just occurred to me that the occultist could actually be in, in a rather interesting combination as well, even though it is, it, 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 it's a very different base uh, class from the soldier itself. But for now, we're just gonna continue killing the Order of Death's Vigil in here. And they're undead buddies. That skill's not ready. And then once we level up, which I have to say, we are gaining a fair amount of experience. Once we level up, we're gonna boost our offensive skill a bit more. 
that's what we're gonna do the next couple of levels see if we can get slightly more dangerous in combat that skill's not ready and then once we got that we will start multi-classing so far a demolitionist looks like the most interesting of a classes because it will give us a bit more of an, an aggressive edge and I think the I can't do that blast yet. shield is gonna be a terrific skill because it's it's just a no it's a it's a damage shield and I like damage shields it's why I always pick the tortoise first that skills not ready and just getting a yet another one oh, it works for me also the uh, boost to our retaliation damage here again and the aggressive auras and all that good stuff I think it will be fun. The druid is a very, or no, not druid, uh, the shaman is a very safe choice. But I'm afraid it would make, no, uh, it, it, it would not f um, really change the build. It would keep the build as it is. And right now it is, well, sturdy, can't do that but yet. slow. And yeah, it would be nice to get slightly more active gameplay in here. So if we could just burn things a bit more actively while just running through, that would be nice. That skill's not ready. Okay, note to self. Ignore the undead. That skill's not ready. And we got him. Okay, then there's a dreadlord in there. One upside of charging them and then knocking them back is that you push them out of the group so it's easier to target them. And they lost their undead. Good. Back where we started. Oh. I thought there was a little connection there. Oh, you are actual human. Now you're a dead human. And just look at just how much caster st things are dropping. Uh, they did do it right. The no, I have the same as with Titan Quest. Mobs drop what they're holding. At least I think that's how it works, and that's why you see so much thematically appropriate loot dropping because that's no mobs got a really high chance of dropping all that stuff. That that's also one of the things that did set Titan Quest apart in its time. Because I think it was the only action RPG that did it. But if you just zoomed in far enough on, on the mobs, you could actually see what they were holding and what they would end up dropping. Of course, with our, our loot filter, you won't see everything. And it could be that, that here they, they won't drop everything they're holding, but at least yet. some of them. Because I do remember Titan Quest having a great tier of items, which was even below the white items, and it could be no other, other, utter trash. And that was the default what mobs were holding. It was just worth nothing to sell, and it wasn't even worth picking up to use beyond level one. I can't do that yet. But no, it is what allowed the the death to equip the monsters with gear. I guess that that's why it worked. But here you, you know you see that items fly away ready. that then just disappear. Some of them stay around, some of them disappear. Also, I was killing a, a skeleton again rather than going for the humans. Bad habits to unlearn to just just kill the thing that's closest to you. Usually not a bad strategy either. Okay, the other side branch is off there, so when we walk back, we can just uh, walk around. And we see Master Ravik on the map. I do. It does seem Can't do that yet. familiar now. So it might be that indeed when you're playing with the other side that you do get a quest to go here and kill someone else. 
I don't know. We'll see you again next playthrough. Because by that time, I'll probably have forgotten what we got here exactly. That skill's not ready. Uh, also, I'm getting a revenant. Let's not do that. Let's just kill all the humans. Go for the acolytes. They summon the small scuddies. And you. Boom. And you have your own. Master Revok. Yes. The Death's Whisper. Yeah, see, he just keeps summoning the uh, the revenants. So there really is no point in killing those actively. I can't do that. Yet. Uh, situations like this is why you want slightly more powerful attacks, because. Fun as it is that they can't kill me. Being rather slow in killing them in turn is getting a little long in the tooth. But we're working on it. So I will give it a couple more episodes and we should be in much better shape. And there he was. Master Revok. Dead. Of course, we're not gonna go away here before we grab all the shiny loot that he was hoarding here. Er, yes. I should actually click the box before opening, uh, so it opens more dynamite. We're getting a fair bit of dynamite here, which is useful. Priest here. Of course, priest must die first. Then we Can't take care of the humans. Yet. And see. There, there are the humans. That skill's not there. ready. And then we have some guys that were indeed just native to the area. And that takes us back to here. So we can portal out. And we have to hand this in, of course, in Soros Bastion, because it's a quest of our brothers in arms of Kaiman's Chosen. Let's see if this is enough to uh, make him uh, like us. I think we're halfway through. Mm, 1700. We need 1800 experience. No, that's not going to be it for now. Have you dealt with Ravik? I have slain the Necromancer. And that was worth 250 points. That's good. And Enchanted Flint. Not useful. You have exceeded even the Blessed Father's expectations. He wishes to speak with you. Do not make him wait, brother. I will do just that. But first. Yeah, well done. I'll, I'll empty my pockets. It's not going to be too much interesting just yet. Hello, Father Kaiman. Come, my loyal chosen. I have a task for you that comes from Imperian himself. What is Imperian's will? Imperian has granted me a vision of a faraway place. In it, I saw a great fire, a beacon in the darkness. But the flame is being extinguished by tendrils of corruption. But there is still hope, and Imperian has shown me that you are to lead the charge. The Order of Death's Vigil, even as we speak, are laying waste to the sacred site underneath Fort Icon to the north. It is the tomb of Arkham Bartholom, a priest who, centuries ago, was a devout follower of Imperion. The Order have found the Archon's sacred ashes. They likely intend to use them to fuel some twisted ritual. Well, actually, they're ten intending to resurrect one of their own. No, I've, I've done this in a previous life. It, it's actually really, really nice. We must not allow this to happen. We must go to the tomb and reclaim the ashes for the Chosen. Let nothing stand in your way. Okay. 
So yeah, I've, I've done this before. Um, making slight mockery out of this, but there are a bunch of, of fanatics and I just can't take this seriously. So let's sell all the caster implements because, well, let's face it, we're not a caster. Which is nice because that means we're getting a lot of money. Two-handed crossbow. Physical damage, more physical damage, chance to stun. Physique, health, this is not a bad one. I think I'm just gonna tuck this into the stash somewhere. So if maybe I intend to start a, uh, let's say a two-handed demolitionist, then I might have a two-handed weapon ready for once we hit level 27. Uh, spellbook, pistols, don't really care. Bones to all damage. Uh, just most most loot on average is not gonna be all that useful. There's a little bit of energy burn on there, but yeah, not worth taking. Downgrade in terms of armor, we do get to dual resist and some piercing damage, but we will lose some of the health regen benefits and the other defensive bonuses that we had. And the plus one to overguard is kind of nice. Yeah, tricky. This this should have been a green one. Then it would have been way, way nicer. Currently, we're not really gaining all that much because the relevant resists have already been mostly maxed. So we're only getting, gaining them at half effectiveness and then losing the armor is not useful. Plus losing overguard is not useful. Just again, just no real bonus. Different elemental bonuses and such. Wand. Oh, that's... Completely not useful. Hey, this one is green. Vitality damage, we don't do it. Ether damage, we don't do it. Less damage from the undead. That's potentially useful, but it's only one of the monster types. Uh, and all the other mods are, again, not useful. 4% light uh, health. That That's not too bad, though. But uh, I do prefer the resist we currently have. Not bad. Fire and lightning resist. Both are maxed, though. Just damage types we don't have, damage we don't do. Ooh, this is half the armor we have. It boosts bleeding, we don't care. Cunning, we don't care. Health regen. The, yeah, I think the old one is actually not as good. The percentage bonus is gonna matter at our, at our level. And 24 to elemental resistances. If this had, had the same amount of armor, I would have seriously considered this. Because there's a lot of resist on it, but losing the armor means we are going to be taking a lot more physical damage on our shoulder pads, which is just not cool. So, yeah. Iron well spent. No gear upgrades, but which is not a surprise. It's no, we got a fair good, fairly good set. Um, I've been just gathering scrap. Currently back up at 14 scrap, and just just crafting things once in a while and that is a decent way to get upgrades so and i'm with some blues in there it's good the at some point you stabilize and the level 35 or whatever gear i'm on right now you can't push for uh, quite a long time with the same gear as long as your resists are good and your health is well our health is in a terrific state right now seven and a half thousand is pretty godly i think i've got level 60 characters that don't have this, this much health Trade-off is we're not doing all that much damage. But, well, builds always have trade-offs. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm gonna thank you very much for watching. Next episode, we are likely to get ourselves another level, which means we will start to uh, push some more points into the more aggressive things. I think we're gonna put some points into fighting spirit. Make that trigger a bit more frequently, boost ourselves a bit more frequently, because the damage bonus is pretty nice. And if you can keep this up, let's say most of the time in fights, then that's going to be a rather substantial bonus. Hit things easier, hit harder, crit maybe more often. It's going to be good. Anyway, that was it for now. So I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.